people. We pray that God give us the grace to become more emotionally intelligent and to do better as, as, as God's children um, in our relationships, in Jesus' name. Um, everyone, you're welcome to church, everyone. Our uh, Bible reading for today is taken from um, Matthew chapter 16, from verse, um, from verse, 16, uh, verse 16. It says, Simon Peter, Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his word in Jesus' name. Uh, let's pray as we, as we start the service. Everlasting Father, we want to say thank you for another time in your presence. Thank you for the gathering of your people. Thank you because it's unto you that all flesh calls. Father, we pray that as we have gathered today, that we will meet, you, you meet us at the point of our needs in the name of Jesus. We pray that your grace will be sufficient for us today. We pray that our worship will be acceptable uh, before you in the name of Jesus. Father, we all come with, with different faces, with different um, expectations. We pray that those expectations will not be cut short in the name of Jesus. We pray that your grace will be sufficient for us and your name will be glorified. At the end of today's service, let's all have the full cause to give glory to your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. of you you are because of who you are I give you glory because of who you are I give you glory because of who you are I will raise my voice and say Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you glory. I will give my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. To walk my child, I walk my child, I walk my of who you are. You've been our peace, the victory that we have. We worship you. You've been our provider. You have preserved us. We give you praise and glory this morning. We ascribe all glory and majesty to you. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We serve a living God. And so I'd like to welcome everyone this morning, wherever you're joining us from. We welcome you into the presence of the Most High God. And I'd like to encourage you to worship with us, to praise God with us this morning. Amen. Because we serve a living God. He does not change. He is still God. Hallelujah. He is still God. So be encouraged this morning that God is still God. Even in times such as these, God is still God. Hallelujah. Amen. I serve a living God. I serve a living God.
difficult for our God. Absolutely nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 9, we're talking about around verse 27, talking about the, the two blind men that followed Jesus, crying after him, saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. Son of David, have mercy on us. You might be crying out to God this morning, asking him for his mercy. But just like the Bible says there, they kept crying after him. But Jesus probably did not say anything, but he went after him. And when he got into the house, the Bible records that Jesus asked them if he's able to do that. And because they said yes, the, the, the young literal translation says that Christ said to them, you will not be disappointed. This morning I want to encourage you to keep the faith, to stay strong, and you will not be disappointed because we serve a living God. Jehovah is his name and he does not disappoint his people. It's not in his character to disappoint. So be encouraged this morning even as we worship the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah.
Why? 
the lead. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is good. And all the time, our God is good. Amen. Shall we pray? And so, our Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise. King of kings and the Lord of lords, we magnify you. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in our midst even this morning. Thank you, Father, O oh God, for making it possible for us to come together to worship you. Lord, despite pandemic situations, despite challenges, Father, you have continued to enable us. You have continued to love us. You have continued to... In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Well, um, please excuse us for um, a little bit of uh, uh, challenging problems with the microphone just now. Um, well, I have a working mic and uh, we're ready to go. Amen. Let me start by welcoming every one of you who is um, watching us online this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, the King of glory, the God of all grace, he will visit you in the name of Jesus Christ. God will show up for you every time you call upon him. This year will be a special year for you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Um, well, without much ado, I'm going to I'm going to continue um, in a series of messages that I uh, actually started it last week. And I, called, I titled it, Possessing 
the gates of prosperity in 2021. Possessing the gates of prosperity in 2021. Amen. And um, we, already, we read, for those of you who are just joining us, uh, we already read this portion of scripture um, at the beginning of the service, but I'm just going to, I'm going to um, go back there and I will, I will uh, go on from there. Amen. If you have your Bibles, please open to Matthew chapter 16. I'm going to start reading from verse 13. Matthew chapter 16 from verse number 13. Please follow me with whatever translation of scripture that you have. Verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? <laughs> so he identifies himself quite all right, but he says, What are other people saying? Verse 14. And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some say you are Elijah. Others say you are Jeremiah. Or even one of the prophets. Then Jesus said unto them, But who say ye that I am? So others have said they've had their say. My question is, who do you say that I am? And then we pick up from where we read earlier at the beginning of the service. Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, but my Father, which are in heaven. The Lord bless the reading of his word. May you have, Father, please give us revelation, even into your word this morning, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, I'm going to continue from the uh, message I have titled, Possessing the Gates of Prosperity in 2021. Uh, last week, I, I talked about gates in general, and I spent uh, you know, a good time trying to build a foundation of what gates mean. Amen. I build a foundation of what gates mean. Gates are a place of authority and so on and so forth. Um, we talked about the fact that um, what gates represent in biblical times is a center of leadership. That's where decisions are made. That's where announcements are made. That's where the court the court of justice takes place. The gate is an important part. It's like the capital, the capital, uh, what, what we know as the capital of a city, the, the center, the center of decision making. That's where the leaders gather together. So whoever takes over the gate is in charge. Whoever has control of the gate is in charge of the city. Amen. So we talked about all of this, you know, last week. And our assignment and your assignment is to take over the gates of prosperity in the year 2021 so that when you are in control of that gate, you control what goes in, you control what goes out, you have control as God will give you control of your destiny. Amen. Hallelujah. Possessing the gates of prosperity. Let me say this, be careful that when we're talking about prosperity, it goes beyond money. Prosperity is total well-being. So if you have control of the gates of prosperity, it means you have control of the total well-being in the year 2021. Amen. Hallelujah. You're in for a great time this year in the name of Jesus Christ. God led me to talk about this particular topic so that when we rise up to the challenge of being, of, of, of being in control of that gate, nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing will stop you from entering into God's prosperity this year in the name of Jesus Christ. 
When I was building on this foundation last week, and I talked about some illegal occupants at the gate. And we, we read about Absalom. We talked about the, uh, 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 the servants at the gate in the time of Esther that Mordecai, you know, actually overheard when they were trying to assassinate the king. So, <clears throat> there are illegal occupants who also aspire to take over the gates, aspire to take over the gates so that they will have control. That they will have control. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. And so we said, our job is to locate every illegal occupant at your gate so that you will properly uh, 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 take it over, control it, and live your, the, the best life of your, uh, uh, the best time of your life this year, 2021. Amen. It shall be so for you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You will take over that gate in Jesus' name. And so, come be, coming back to the Bible verse that we read today, um, we see Jesus Christ now giving us insight about another gate. Said there's an ultimate illegal occupant of the gates of the life of believers. He said the, there's a gate of Hades, the gate of hell. He said, I will build my church. I will build my church. Now, who is the church? The church is you and I. You and I are the gathered people. The church is those who are called by God. The church is, is, is speaking about those who belong to the kingdom of God. He said, I'm going to build you. And that's why I need you to understand that our emphasis and focus in this year, 2021, is on this building. We're going to be building. We're, this is so, you know, it's, um, it's, 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 it's key for us as a vision for this year. It instructs us. He said, I will build my church and we are going to be building with Christ. But who is he building? He's building you. He's building me. He's building the assembly. And he said, the gates of hell, the gates of Hades will not prevail. In other words, the gates of hell wants to prevail. The gates of hell. Now, uh, other translations will say, the gates of Hades. Gates of Hades. Hades, that is the gate of death. He said, he wants to prevail. He said, but he will not allow the gate of death to prevail over you, to prevail over his church in the year 2021. Oh, coronavirus. <laughs> he wants to take control of that gate. He wants to control people. He wants to control how you move. He wants to control where you go. He said, but I will build my church and that gate of hell, the gate of death. He won't allow it to control you and I. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to build it. Amen. Praise God. I will not allow the gate of hell to prevail against you. I will not allow it to prevail. Amen. Now, two, two quick things and then I'm going to interrupt this message because there's something I wanted to just share briefly and then I'll, um, you know, I'll continue. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, he said, I will not allow the gates of hell to prevail. But he said something. He said, he said, who, I, who am I? Who do men say am I? Then he asked Peter too. Peter answered and said, you are the Christ. In, in verse 17, Jesus said something. He said, Simon Peter, <laughs> Simon by Jonah, son of Jonah, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. But it's only my father who could have revealed this. In other words, the revelation of Jesus Christ at that point in time, it needed, God needed to give you that revelation. It was not something easily um, um, available. It needed insight. It needed revelation. He said, and he, he, the building of his church is going to be built on the revelation knowledge that Christ is the king. So once you catch that revelation, I will build you up. Once you catch the revelation knowledge, underline the word knowledge. 
When you know who I am, I will build you up and the gate of hell will not prevail against you. I will build you up when you know me. He says, who do men say I am? Do they really know me? That's the question you got to ask yourself. Everyone will tell you, oh, I seem to know I have some knowledge. But it is those who know me, those who know that God will be strong and they will do exploits. So it is upon that revelation knowledge that the gates of hell will not prevail against you. If you are going to possess the gates of, of, of Hades, of hell, the gates of prosperity, you must have the knowledge of who this God is. You must know him. You must understand who he is. So Jesus played with some words there. You know, he said, Peter, in other words, uh, 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 Petra, which means a small rock, a small piece of stone. It's a Petra. Petra, Peter, little rock. And then he now said, it is on a big rock. So Peter, you are a little rock. You have a part to play in this thing. But you are only a little rock. But when I build my church, I'm going to build it on the rock, which is Jesus. Uh, which is the, 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 the rock, which is the, uh, um, you know, Christ having uh, 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 completed the work of salvation right there on the cross. That is the rock. That's going to be instrumental into building you, building the church, building his people. Amen. And I love what it says in verse 19. And that's how it all begins to come together. In verse 19, it says, And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. How many of you know that when you have a key, you don't struggle with a door? When you have a key of a gate, you don't struggle. That's why, you know, when you see someone, they call him a gate man. He is an important person. You better be, <laughs> amen. You better be nice to a gate man. He can lock you out. The one who has the key is in control. He said, I'm going to give you the keys, amen, of the kingdom. A key, the kingdom of heaven speaks about the fact that we are going inside. Inside, you see, when you have a key, he said, I'll give you the key of the kingdom, amen. It tells us that you have an opportunity to enter into that kingdom. The kingdom is meant to be entered into. Amen? The ki kingdom is, is meant to be entered into. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. So I'll give you the key. When you have the key, this is how we possess the gates. We got to have the key. And it says, when you now have the key, oh Lord Jesus, you can bind and you can lose. You can bind the works of darkness. You can lose prosperity upon yourself. You can lose release. That word is a technical word. It's a complex word. So when you bind, in other words, you resist. You oppose. You confront. You don't allow it. You, whatever you bind here on earth, whatever you resist, whatever you oppose, say heavens, once you have the key, heavens will back you up and you will resist them as well. When you resist them, heavens will back you up to resist them. And whatever you lose, that is whatever you allow, I give you the keys to allow it, heavens will back you up to allow it. Amen. Jesus was speaking here. Remember in Matthew 28, he said by himself, all authority is given to me. So in other words, the key represents authority. Authority to possess the gates. That's what this message and this series is about. The authority that we receive from Christ to bind, to lose, to enter the kingdom, to possess the gates. We talked last week about you know, God telling uh, Abraham, he said, your seed will possess the gates of, the, of, of his enemies. We will possess. We will possess in the name of Jesus Christ. Today, the key is coming into your hand. 
And whatever you bind will be bound. Whatever you lose, it shall be loosed in the name of Jesus Christ. I wish you would say a louder amen to that. I wish you would say a louder amen to that. Amen. God is going to do something special and you will indeed take control of that gate in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, just one or two more things and then I'm, I'm, I'm just going to... Ah, thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Possessing the gates. Now, let me... Let me uh, I focus this message a little bit more now that we understand gates. We understand the importance of gates. We, impo we understand how Jesus himself gave us, uh, he said it's part of helping to build us up. To make sure that whatever we do, he's backing us up. Amen. Today, God, in fact, through the series of, uh, of messages we're preaching, God he will hand over the key to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The gates of hell will not prevail against you in the name of Jesus Christ. And so, you know, as I was just breaking down this message into different parts, I understand that the, 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 number one, um, the number one key, the number one gate that we need to possess is this gate of the kingdom. The gate of this kingdom. He said, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. When you have the keys of the kingdom, every other thing begins to follow. Having the keys of the kingdom is like having the keys of the prosperity we are talking about. When you have the keys of prosperity, ah, amen. It means that blessing is part of that package. It means that finance is part of that package in the kingdom. It means peace and joy is part of the package that comes along with the kingdom. So when he says, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom, the keys of the kingdom, because Jesus is the king of that kingdom, once I give it to you, guess what? You have the total package of prosperity for the year 2021. You just need the key of the kingdom. Amen. Amen. And whatever you buy, whatever you lose, since heavens will back you up in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to pray in a few minutes, but there was something that, um, you know, I, I just wanted to, um, um, you know, to talk about a little bit in terms of what is going on um, for the rest of um, uh, this month and next month. Hallelujah. Now, um, last week I announced, we're going to pray in a few minutes, please. Um, last week I announced that we're, we're starting our children's church and we're going to be, you know, um, uh, having it online. So last week we did have um, what uh, we call the, um, um, an open house, like a kind of uh, introductory session where we brought all the kids together. You know, we had the orientation and things like that. You know, we put people in classes. So, anyways, that's going to continue today. But we're starting at 12.15. Amen. So, we're going to be starting at 12.15. And then we'll, um, we'll uh, be able to put the class and we'll be able to teach the children. We'll be able to put things in perspective when the kids get there. I'm going to ask parents, please, you know, uh, get your kids ready for this class. This is an important class for us. We really need... Um, uh, the kids to be instructed. We're talking about uh, building the church and building our kids is part of the package. It's part of what God wants us to do. He wants us to build his church, his believers, the adults, the kids, all of us together. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. Um, I also want to say one thing and that is the fact that if you are watching us online and you 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 know, you, you appreciate what, it, what goes into uh, uh, a ministry of this nature. You know, when, uh, you know, we come in and it's just five of us, there's, there's me preaching to a lot of empty chairs here, but I know that you are watching, you know, online. There's a lot of, it, it, there's, 
you know, it, it, it's a challenge on its own. Amen. And so some of you have been watching you, have been part of the service. We really appreciate you because I know you are there. I know that you're listening. And I know that God's power that flows from this altar is also flowing into your home. But I just need you to go a step further to take the services very seriously. Amen. God is never bound by time. He's not bound by space. He's not bound by geographic location. The ability to be together, what we read about the church, it does not mean that they had, they were, they, they had to be only in one place. The church is a collection, you know, even from, from the early church, it was a collection of smaller units in different places. And so your home is part of the church as you are right now. And so I want you to, uh, uh, you know, get ready for services the way we normally you will get ready if you are going out. Get ready, be prepared, sit in front of the TV or, 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 or the computer. Get ready, prepare yourself. Amen. And if you joined us, uh, you know, after that and you are thinking, well, you know what, I like to, to serve. I want to be an usher. I want to, uh, what, 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 what way can I help this ministry? What way can I be involved? Uh, please just send me an email. My email is pastor at Kings Court Brampton. Kings with an S. Court Brampton dot org. Send me an email. I can, I promise you that I will, I, I respond to all my emails and, you know, we can, um, you know, get together. We can talk some more. Praise God. Now going, going further, um, um, one of the things, the next big event that's happening in our church uh, is our family day celebration. Amen. Every year, we, we gather together in a, in a location. We have an in-person meeting. I still remember clearly you know, last year when we had our family day. You know, it was a little bit of snow towards the end of the day, but it was such a nice time. You know, there were birthday cakes, there were games, you know. It was just a time that we gathered together just to do family. Amen. Parents come together, the men come together, the women come together, the kids, we dance, we do different things, we play games. You know, it's one of those events that I look forward to every year. Why? Because it's not just another service, but this time we're doing life together. We're doing family. We're extolling family virtue which Christ himself created. So I tell all the men, don't send your children and, and just, you know, they say, oh, you know, women, you take the children and go and do family day. That family is not complete if you are not there. So we used to all gather together. The men will come together. We enjoy ourselves. We have a good time. Amen. But now, <laughs> COVID happened. Big question. By the special grace of God, we're going to do family day. I need the mic. By the special grace of God, we're going to do family day online. We're going to come together. We're going to be remote. And we're going to, um, we're going to have it as an online event. Amen. Praise the Lord. I need another mic. Okay, so...
Amen. All right. Praise God. So, sorry about that again. Um, when you have only five people in church and you have to manage and make do with <laughs> limited resources, surprises like this continue to happen. Amen. All right. So, I was talking about our uh, family day. So, let's get ready for an online family day event. It's going to be uh, very nice. Um, some of you uh, that attended our celebration night and, you know, you had the experience of what it means to be together and to enjoy fellowship, um, you know, that's one of the ways that you can picture what the family day is going to look like. It's going to be a time of fun. We're just going to come together and just have fun that night. It's, you know, it's no preaching, no, you know, we're just going to do family together and I believe we can do it effectively online. Um, if you want to be part of it, again, I'm going to ask that you please just shoot. I mean, if you want to be part of the planning committee, shoot me an email, you know, you know or you have some ideas that you want to um, bring into, um, you know, into the planning. Please just send your, send your uh, email you know, to me or to events, events at kingscottbrampton.org. Amen. Now, here's one key thing that... Um, I just needed to bring to your attention. Hallelujah. Last year, please pay attention to me very carefully. Um, last year, I went through a period where I had what I, what I by myself labeled ministry fatigue. Um, you know, just constantly going, constantly working constantly doing my secular job full-time, working ministry full-time, you know, balancing both. And of course, you know, still have a family to run and, and I mean, to still have a family to, to, to lead. Amen. So, um, this was just going on many times in a year. Uh, at best, I take maybe two, three days here and there. But there literally no Sunday that I would not be there. I'm expected to be in every service. You know? I'm expected to be in every service. So I, I had what I call ministry fatigue. I was giving and giving and just not nourishing myself enough. I, I, I was almost burnt out. But thank God, you know, I had uh, an opportunity to travel to Nigeria and I, I was away for a whole month. At that point in time, even my hair was, I was, I was growing gray hair. I had more gray hair than Barack Obama when he left office. You know, I, I, I saw pictures of him when he went into office and, and when he finished his eighth term. Like, my goodness, this, he, 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 all, every, every part of his hair just went gray. Heavy responsibility. So I, 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 was, I, was, I was like that. So I took off for some time and I... I, uh, I was able to recover myself. I came back energized and, you know, I, I'm, I'm back. Ministry is demanding. Ministry is de demanding. Ministry in, uh, uh, requires long hours, intense hours, you know, praying, addressing problems, ch challenges here and there, and different meetings, you know, putting structure in place. It's, it's challenging, you know. Um, so... It, it does, you can ex experience, you can, you, can ex you can understand the reason why sometimes it's, you know, it, um, uh, pastors do experience, um, you know, burnout and, and, and fatigue. And it doesn't help when you have, you know, people who are ready to criticize every little thing. Why is the mic not working? Why is that? Why is that? Before every little thing. You know, if you have some skills, you know, and you, God is showing you that the mic isn't working, why don't you just step forward and be helpful to see that the mics work properly and, 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 and add. Don't just be part of the uh, criticizers. Don't be part of the problem. Be part of the solution, you know. So it doesn't help when, you know, as a pastor, you know, you're keeping it together, you're trying you're experiencing fatigue, and then it's all criticism and all of that. Amen. So I just want you to know that mystery fatigue is real. Be careful. Don't be a part of the 
criticize us, but be part of the solution. Amen. Now, I want you to also understand that um, my wife, my lovely wife, she also has, some of you maybe have noticed that she has not been available for a lot of ministry function, you know, uh, for the past several, wife, uh, several months, you know. Um, uh, if there's anything I can say, it's a lot as a result of ministry fatigue as well. Because I, I don't really want to hear any, you know, unnecessary stories. Just focus on what the ministry needs to, what needs to be done in the ministry. And let's get the job done. And let, let God be proud of us, of what we're doing and how we're advancing the kingdom. He said, the kingdom uh, uh, divided against itself cannot even stand. So, you know, you do the right thing. I do the right thing. We please God. He works with us and he will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So, without much ado, we're talking, I'm rounding up my message when I talked about possessing the gates. The key gate that we are focusing on today is the gate of ministry, the gate of the kingdom. Christ is saying to us, he said, go and take nations. Go and take nations. I give you the authority. Take nations. Welcome people to the kingdom. Be part of building the kingdom. And whatever you bind will be bound. Whatever you lose will be loosed. So if you go out to preach to somebody, God says, I give you authority to bind Satan's in the life of the people that you preach to. I give you authority to loose them into health and blessing of God. Amen. The gates of ministry. God said, I will back you up. In Jesus' name, shall we pray? I want you to pray for yourself for one minute and say, Father, what are the things that you need to bind in your life? What are the things that you need to lose? God said, you do it here, I will do it in heaven. I have the authority. I'm giving you the opportunity now. The key, see here, take the key. Now begin to buy, begin to lose in the name of Jesus. Now go ahead. What are those things that, you see, if, because if you possess, there's no point in you possessing the gates. There's no point in you possessing the gates of your enemies, possessing the gates of the kingdom, and you're not using the key. If you don't have the key, you don't have the gates. So Christ is saying, behold, look, I'm giving you the key. This is the key. Here is the key in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sir. Please pray very quickly and just say, Father, Lord, I receive the key. He says, I will give you the keys. I will. He said it then. When he died, he handed over the key. <laughs> Ah, the key has been released. Lay hold of the key this morning. In the name of Jesus. Lay hold of the key. I wish somebody would pray right now. And say, oh God, I receive the key. I receive the key. The key of ministry. The key of the gates of hell. Oh Lord Jesus. Bible tells us, remember when Christ died, uh, he went in down into hell. Uh, he took the key. He said, no, 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 no. This key will not work against my children anymore. He took it uh, and then he handed it over to us. Uh, that's why I know you will not die even this year. As you hold on to that key, God is going to back you up in the name of Jesus. Uh, now use that key to unlock life. Uh, use that key to unlock prosperity. Use that key. So whatever you lose, whatever you bind, it shall be bound in the name of our Lord Jesus. Now just count one or two things in your mind, in your head. What must be bound? I bind every oppression of the devil. I bind every, every, every resistance to ministry. Every resistance, every opposition, every wicked individuals, every strange persons. I bind their oppression in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Now just lose in another half minute. Uh, lose goodness. Lose peace. Uh, because when you're in control of the gates, guess what? Uh, I'm telling you, prosperity is your portion. 
Many, many things are coming for you this year. Many, many things God has lined up for you. And it shall be your portion in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, before I pray for you, if you are here and you are listening to this message, you're not sure where you belong. You're not sure if, you know, um, you're actually a part of the kingdom. Because there's a key to enter the kingdom. I'm telling you this. Christ said, um, um, I stand at the door of your, of your heart. If you open to me, I will come in. That's when you become part of the kingdom. It's not everybody that is in the kingdom. You can think you're in the kingdom, but you're, if you're not yet in the kingdom, it's only Christ that knows. So some people came to him. He said, you know, I built houses for you. Jesus said, I don't know you. In other words, you are not part of the kingdom. But if you need to be part of the kingdom, you can say this prayer with me quickly. Heavenly Father, just repeat after me, Heavenly Father. Today I recognize that I'm not fully part of your kingdom yet, but I'm willing to join. I want you to be the king of my life. I want you to be the king. I want, you to, I want to be part of your kingdom. Please receive me. I repent of all my sins, Lord, and I make you my Lord and Master. Please, from today, receive me into your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. It's as simple as that. I want to welcome you to the kingdom of God. Now, as a part of the kingdom, you also can operate the key, the key of prosperity, the key of the kingdom to lose, to bind, to progress, and to have a wonderful year 2021. Now, everybody, please close your eyes. Let me pray and release you into the hands of God. Heavenly Father, thank you, O God, Lord, for this, this morning. Lord, thank you, O God, for what we are learning concerning possessing the gates of the, uh, possessing the gates of prosperity in 2021. Prosperity is more than money. We understand that only too well. We understand that there are illegal, illegal occupants at the gates. There is the gate of hell. It's an illegal occupant, hell himself, Satan and all his demons. But today, we dispossess them against our lives in the name of Jesus. For everyone, Father Lord, for every one of your children that is listening to me right now, that the gate of hell, Satan and his demons, they have camped against them. They've camped to make sure they don't go out, they don't come in. They've camped against their progress. Oh, male, kalia, reba, satos, ketele, reboza. Father, upon, by the power of God that lives in me and the authority that Christ has given me. For everyone under the sound of my voice, I pray for you this morning that I dislodge every gate of hell, every illegal camper in the name of Jesus. Father, he says, surely they will gather. But because the gathering is not of me, he said, I will scatter them. For as many who have They've come together and say, well, I'm going to see how they will do ministry. I'm going to do, see how the, the church will progress. I'm going to do everything to pull down the hand of the church. Father, just answer them. You know, for me, my prayer is bind and lose. I, I resist everything that they can do. And I release this ministry into the prosperity of God. I release every soul that belongs to this house into the hand of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you bind, it shall be bound. In other words, whatever you refuse, whatever you reject, whatever you reject, whatever you oppose, heavens will oppose with you in the name of Jesus. And I stand here to say, you and I, we oppose sicknesses. You and I, we oppose uh, sudden death. You and I, we oppose uh, coronavirus infections. Uh, you and I, we oppose, uh, 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 um, you know, uh, problems, uh, even in relationships. Like one of the messages I'm going into is uh, 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 about, you know, the gate of good relationship. We must possess that gate as well in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you, Heavenly Father, for this time. Lord, we release the, the, everyone for the rest of the week into your hands. Have your way. Build us up, oh God. That's your promise, that you will build us. Please build us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And everybody say a very loud, 
Amen. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it's really been a pleasure to uh, share this Sunday morning with you. Please uh, uh, enjoy the rest of the day. And at 12.15, um, our parents, please help the kids to log in. Make sure that they're in and, and you know, we can have our uh, Sunday school class today. God bless you. Have a wonderful day and see you all uh, later. And Wednesday, don't forget, Wednesday is our midweek Bible study. Uh, be part of that and continue to build along in Jesus' name. God bless you. Bye for now.